In this video, I'm going to travel to Eddie's Body Shop in Wichita, and Vern is going to show you how to replace a windshield on a 2016 Volkswagen Passat. Now Vern's going to do this just using a cold knife, but he's also going to show us a couple other tools. Uh, he is going to use that reciprocating saw on the bottom, but he has a tool called the Equalizer Cobra, I believe he said it was, and it basically has a string or a wire that goes around the windshield, and he said about 95% of the time you can get a windshield out without cracking it when using that. And that would be useful if the windshield's not cracked and you have to replace the uh, roof or something like that. What it does, it uh, just suction cups to the window. And you wrap the wire around the windshield and hook it into here and it just ratchets. And it pulls the wire in and cuts the glass out for you. Doesn't do any body damage to the car, no scratching, no, no issues that way. And now he's showing us uh, some different blades he has for the uh, Equalizer AM Bush. Uh, we have one of these at the school, which works really well, uh, especially for like the bottom of the windshields. And we'll demonstrate that here in a little bit. And he's going to use that, but it's basically just a reciprocating saw with a real long blade that can cut that glue. But before we start replacing the windshield or removing it, we've got to take the windshield wipers off. And there's also that cow vent panel up there that we'll need to take off. Pretty simple uh, to remove these things. All you got to do is uh, most of this has clips that you got to take out and uh, that will pop right off. Now this is an easy windshield. Uh, a lot of the cars, he, I'll show you a picture of another one he had in there. It has a uh, cameras and sensors and you know all that stuff that's built into the windshield that plugs in and if that's the case uh, you may have to calibrate it or you will have to calibrate it. And he said they're still sending that to the dealer part of the store for that. And uh, probably a lot of shops are doing the same thing. They're probably uh, sending that to the dealer. But this is a thing that, you know, everything is going to need, need to be calibrated. We're talking about windshields, side mirrors, bumper covers. All have all these sensors and things. So we're all going to have to become more familiar with how to calibrate this. It's, he says it takes a special room. And then, you know, there's there's some steps to it, and that's something I need to learn as well. But he's protecting the corners of these fenders with some duct tape just to protect it if he happened to accidentally hit it with the glass while he's taking it out. And uh, You always want to protect everything like that. Now, he's just going to sh show us a cold knife. And uh, there is an art to this, because I've seen guys do this, and he made it look like it was butter, and he said it was even cold. He said it works a lot better if the car's warm, if that your thing has time to warm up. But it was cold, oh, yeah. and he still made this look so easy. But I've had problems with this. And I asked him about that, you know, how you get it to slide through there so easy. And he says it's just a technique of getting the angle of that blade just right. But I have never been able to get it to work quite that easy. You know, I'll use every type of pneumatic power tool that I can getting these windshields out. But if you look how easy he goes through this, uh, really there's no need to. If you can get a cold knife to work this easy and this fast... Uh, why use something else? I mean, it's really fast. See, he's already got that whole windshield loose except for the bottom. Now, you can't get to the bottom of that with a cold knife. He is going to have to use that reciprocating saw to uh, saw through that bottom part. And he's cutting all this urethane up by the glass. You don't want to cut it down towards the pinch weld. You want to cut it up towards the glass. And he will smooth and trim that out later. Now, he got some water. And he sprayed in there, just and that helps lubricate the blade, he said, to help it cut a little better. And again, he's pushing that blade up against the windshield so that all the urethane stays on the pinch welds. And uh, this is a pretty fast process as well. Uh, you do want to be careful. You could, uh, you know, damage something if you're not careful. That blade is, is moving up and down, so you got to be careful with that. But you can see this is a pretty fast process as well. Now half that bottom is loose. And he's just got this other half to go. So he's going to get that and cut that out. And this windshield will be ready to take out. Now he's been doing this for 20 years and he's very good at it. Uh, I've never done a lot of windshields and I struggle with them quite a bit more than he is. But he makes this thing look so easy. But it is a little bit more difficult if you're not that experienced. So now he's going to take the glass out and notice how he's handling it. And he's going to go set it down, get the new one, and get, get it ready to uh, put in. And you can kind of see how all the urethane is on the pinch weld. Then he's going to come back and he'll trim that up. So it doesn't have any he's showing us the tools that he uses for this. So it's basically just that. types of uh, oh, okay. cold knives that, that you trim that with. And he said you want to leave about two to three millimeters, 
or no, one to two millimeters of uh, the urethane on there. So you don't want to take it all off. You don't want to take it off to clear the pinch weld. Leave one to two millimeters on there, and then he can put that urethane straight on top of that. And again, he makes this look easy, but it, uh, you know, it can be a little bit more difficult if you're not used to it. And he said he pulls up on these, uh, this urethane strip just in case there's any loose paint. He wants that paint to peel up so he knows about it. He said if you're not pulling up on it, you could possibly get it off and be a, a loose, uh, some loose paint and not know that it pulls up. So be sure that you're pulling on that because if some paint does come loose, you want to be sure that you do uh, get the corrosion protection, you know, prime it and do all the things you need to do if uh, the paint wasn't holding. So now he's just cleaning it off. You do want a nice clean surface. Uh, you don't want any, uh, you know, glass, dirt, dust. Because remember, a windshield on these unibodies, a, a glued-in windshield is actually a structural part. You know, it helps hold the car in place when it, uh, if, it, if in an accident. So keeping everything clean is just as important doing windshields as it is doing uh, paint work. You want everything clean so everything sticks well. So he got the pinch weld clean, and now he's going to move to the glass, going to remove the protectant uh, tape that it had on it. And then he's going to clean this windshield with some glass cleaner just to get it nice and clean. He's going to go around the whole thing and spray down and then he'll wipe it get it clean. And this is important because if there's any contaminants on that glass, it may not stick the way it's supposed to. And, you know, and if you're in an accident, it may not hold up the way it's supposed to. So uh, you can see the dirt that he shows that that took off just from uh, wiping it down. And then he gets a release agent and it's just another step. Uh, that this system has. This is a DuPont system he's using, a Dow, I believe he said, Dow uh, system, but it's from DuPont. I'm not real familiar with the, this system. I use 3M, but he said this works really well. And this is just a rele release agent to remove any contaminants or anything that may cause any type of adhesion problems to cause a windshield not to, you know, stick or be adhered to the pinch weld properly. So he goes around and you kind of scrub that on and, uh, and that's just getting the windshield super clean to prepare it. And uh, there are a couple more steps. You, you, gotta want, you can see the extra dirt that he got off there with that. And now you want to go around and get that, all that agent off and clean it one more time with glass cleaner. And you want it super clean. And then uh, here in a minute he'll go ahead and, and uh, wipe the pinch down, so you do just the pinch weld on the car down with the glass cleaner as well. So he's got it good and clean. And uh, now next there is a primer, a glass primer that you use. And he's gonna apply that to the windshield. And that's what he's doing right now. It's just a, it's a, a primer for the glass just to help it adhere properly. And you put that on, let it set for a little bit. And this is the urethane that he is using. Um, this is from Dow, which is from DuPont, he said. Verna just got back from a glass school, he said. And he, he, this is what they recommend there. So he said it's a really good product. Now we're going back to the pinch well to get it super clean. Going to use some glass cleaner just to make sure everything's super clean. And as you're doing this, you want to inspect to make sure that you didn't scrape through and hit metal anywhere. There was one spot that he, he hit just a little bit of metal, had a little bit of a scratch, and you get some pinch weld primer that you put on there to help for corrosion protection so you put that on there allow it to dry for five minutes I believe he said and then you are ready to start using a urethane now he said when applying this urethane you want to hold that gun at a 90 degree angle to get the correct bead height and, and that you need for the car so and as you can see this goes really fast as well uh, this gun's really nice uh, if you've ever done this with one of the ones that you have to squeeze this makes it a lot easier and a lot faster as well. So you go around the entire urethane, the, the old urethane strip that you had, and we're applying a new bead of urethane here. Now he goes around the other side and he's going to get that. And you want to be careful, he said, not to put too much. If you put too much, it might actually squeeze through and show on the inside. So you don't want to put too much urethane on there you just want a nice bead okay got that on there and again this guy's been doing it for 20 years makes it look easy and uh, 
you know, I have a little more difficulty with windshields. And you see how he's handling that. Uh, he can do these windshields by himself, which I've always had to have two people when I'm doing it. But you set the bottom in first, set it in place, because once you set it down, you don't want to lift it back out. You know, that could cause air bubbles or something in the uh, urethane, cause some uh, adhe adhesion problems. So you want to set the bottom in and then align it and then lay it down. Now, I was taught to pat the glass to make sure it seals real good. And he said that's you're not supposed to do that. that uh, you know, they used to do that with those old gasket windows, but you just want to put pressure. You want to put some pressure and go all the way around the windshield just to push it down and get it set in there real good. Now he's just putting some duct tape on there just to hold it in place. And I believe he said it will set up in about an hour. It dries pretty fast, but it's not fully cure, cured for about 24 hours. Or uh, The directions say on here that they put on their windshield, you know, to kind of leave your windows cracked for about two days uh, just to make sure that it is good and, and uh, dry. Because if you have your windows rolled up and you slam the doors, that's a lot of pressure in the cabin, and that could cause an air bubble or air leak to, uh, in, in the urethane. So keep your windows cracked just a little bit and do not slam your doors. And it says don't wash either for a couple of days. So now that he's got all that done, he's just going to put it back together, put that cow panel back on, put the windshields back on, hook everything up. And again, this one doesn't didn't have any of the, the parking or, or the uh, cameras or any of the sensors in the windshield, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but you just uh, put the, put it back together and you will have to put the rear view mirror on and then you're done. Now here's one right here. Now that's one of the ones I'm talking about. It has a lot of different wires going to it. Uh, cameras and things like that. So, so this is one that would probably have to be calibrated when you're done. Well that my friends is how you replace a windshield in a 2016 Volkswagen Passat. Now one thing I do want to mention that he told me uh, when you recalibrate them, that has the cameras and all that, like a lot of these pickups have all these senses and lane assist and cameras that's tied to the windshield. If that truck is lifted, it never be able, it won't be calibrated. You never will be able to calibrate it correctly again. So that's something to think about if you're going to get a new truck and lift it. You know, that might set those settings off. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure and give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you in the next video.